Hey everybody, welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome back to Marching In With Casseroles. Today, after I turn this down a little bit, today I'm going to be doing a cowboy casserole. And basically it's just basic, you can put anything in it you want. The difference in this kind of casserole, and they call it cowboy casserole, is cowboys, instead of using a pasta noodle, they would use a potato, um, some kind, shredded potatoes, sliced potatoes. Today I'm going to cheat, and I'm using tater tots. So this will be a good recipe I think your kids are going to like. It's easy to throw together. So far I've got a pound, maybe a little bit more of ground beef in here that I've browned off and drained the fat. Now I'm just going to add in, I've got a large purple onion. And you don't have to use this much onion, and you don't have to keep it in such large pieces. I just like the texture of the onion when I'm eating in, in the casserole. So I'm just going to add that in and just let it start sautéing. I don't want it to go all the way soft and translucent because I want a little bite. And it's going to still cook in the oven, a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. So it's still going to cook a little bit. So I've got the onion in and put in my red pepper. I usually use a green pepper, but today I thought I'd a little, add a little bit of color to the recipe and make it a red one. Hope you guys are all enjoying our marching in with casseroles this month. Um, I've seen some great ones. Actually, it was funny because I was going to, when I got this morning, I had already purchased and got all my ingredients ready to make a meatball casserole. And I turned on to see what Leanne made. And she had made a sub or a meatball casserole. Or we don't want to do two of them. And hers looked delicious. I mean, she even used homemade bread and did hers. I was going to use croutons. So I might do my version a little bit later. I just didn't want to throw it in back to back with hers. So I just switched up a little bit. And today we're just going to do a cowboy casserole. So I did salt and pepper the ground beef while it was cooking off. To it, we're going to add one can of tomato soup. And once I get that in there, I'm going to add just a little bit of water. Probably about a fourth of a cup. Clean that can out a little bit. Add it in. And I'm just going to mix that in and get it incorporated. Depending on how it looks, I might add a little bit more water. Because a lot of this moisture is going to get absorbed by the tater tots. That looks good. We're also going to add one can of kidney beans. You could use pinto beans, which I think in the last time I made a cowboy casserole of any sort, I did use pinto beans because pinto beans are one of my favorite. Of course, kidneys are too, but this time I decided to go with the kidney beans instead of the pinto beans. This is already smelling good. I've also got one can, and this is a four ounce can of diced green chilies. I love these things. They're not real spicy. In fact, if you look at the front, it usually says mild right there. You can get spicier ones, but I always get the mild for these kind of recipes. We're going to mix that around. Get those incorporated. There we go. Then I'm going to add about a teaspoon of ground pepper, or ground mustard. And this can... <laughs> I love it. it. doesn't have the shaker top. You just kind of have to open it up and measure off. So I'm going to put about a teaspoon in of the ground mustard. And about a teaspoon of chili powder. Also a teaspoon of paprika. You can use smoked paprika, sweet paprika, whatever you like. Hungarian paprika. Whatever you like. Of course I'm going to put my garlic powder in there. It's got to have garlic powder. Everyone knows I love my garlic. And also about a teaspoon of onion powder. Even though I have the onions in there, I just like the extra flavor the onion powder gives it. Now this is totally optional. I like to put a little bit of red pepper flakes in. And like I said, you don't have to do that. It's optional. Now if you want it really hot, put the red pepper flakes in while you're doing the meat frying the meat initially because the oil from the meat will pull out all the spiciness of the red pepper flakes and really get it going. 
But if you don't want it real spicy, wait till later, <laughs> like I did. I'm also going to put a couple of good splashes, sizes of Worcestershire sauce. Wait, Worcestershire sauce, my grandpa would say. It's Worcestershire sauce, or something like that. And then I'm just going to mix this all together. Get those flavors melting already before I put it in the casserole dish. There we go. And this is great for a nice cold weather kind of day. I woke up this morning, it was 21 degrees. I'm not in Fort Lauderdale, Miami, or South Florida anymore, am I? Still trying to get used to those temperatures that low. Especially when last week it was in the 60s. One day, I think it was last week or the week four, it is almost 80 degrees. Actually, up at Cumberlatch, it the thermometer said it was 80 degrees. So, this is cold and flu season. Everyone's going to be getting pneumonia and the flu from all these weather changes. Okay. So we got that all cooked off. I can turn that off. And I've got about one and a half cups of cheddar and Monterey Jack cheese and about a cup of slot or mozzarella. You can use any kind of cheese you want. I like adding the mozzarella to it. it makes it more gooey and the cheese stretch more. So I'm just going to move my induction cooktop over so we can work in the middle here. I am going to give this a taste for salt and pepper though and see how that is. So like I said, I put salt and pepper in the meat, but now adding all these needs a little bit more salt. And pepper. There we go, just get that all mixed together. Give it another taste. Mm. I think I could just eat a piece, big old bowl of this with some cornbread. This is delicious. All right. So I already sprayed off my 9 by 13 pan. It is a little hot because I have it sitting on top of my oven, which is already preheated. And I've got a 20, I'm sorry, a 32 ounce bag of tater tots and I'm just gonna layer those at the bottom of the pan make sure you get the whole thing covered this will be your base and this and the cheese kind of binds the casserole together guess we're not going to use them all but I'm going to get the whole thing covered if I can. There we go. This is the part that's good to have your kids help you with. They love eating tater tots. They're going to love putting this together too. So there's probably about 30 left in here. I'll just put those in the freezer and use them in the air fryer some night for a little snack. So once you get this in, go ahead if you have two different kinds of cheeses, mix those up real well. I had mine all separated so you could see what I was using. And then we're going to start by spreading cheese over top of the tater tots. Let's try to get an even layer. Now, like I mentioned, we're going to bake this in a 350 degree oven for about 30 minutes. Everything's cooked. The only thing that's not heated is the tater tots. And they were frozen, so they're going to cook real quick because they're on the bottom, close to the <clears throat> heat source. Okay, I'm saving about a cup of cheese on top here and then we're going to add in our meat mixture get that all on top of there then I'll spread it out in all the corners Now, there we go. Well, oh, we're going to be making a mess, as usual. Now, I got an email from 
one of our collaborators. Um, and it's cooking with Bobby Joe. And she started off by saying welcome to Red Bud Winter because she's up here in Tennessee as well or down here in Tennessee, depending on where you're at. And we have five little different winters here in Tennessee. I used to hear my grandma talk about them and didn't think much of them. And now that I'm here, they, this first one they're calling Red Bud Winter because all the red buds are coming out on the eastern red bud trees that are native here in the area, real popular. They're beautiful. I'm hoping to get some of the red buds because they are edible. And I was going to make a jelly or a little um, pound cake out of them. So I'm going to see if I can get some. I'm afraid a lot of them are going to be gone because of the frost last night and the freeze. But I'll try. But yeah, this is Red Bud Winter. Then we have four others. I have to look them up and see what the names are exactly. I'll, I, maybe I'll do a little video on that for you all so you can see what those are. And now I'm just going to spread this remaining cheese right on top. And I'm going to bake this uncovered for about 30 minutes. But check it in about 15, 20 minutes in your oven. Everyone's oven's different. We all say that all the time because it's true. We just don't want it to burn up on you. So there we go. So I'm going to put this in the oven. And in about 30 minutes, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back. The timer went off. It's been about 20, 25 minutes for me, and I'm getting it out because my cheese is the way I like it, nice and golden on top. I've been checking it every couple minutes because my little oven here is a really good convection oven, so it does cook a little faster, and as you can see, nice and golden Ooh. and hot. <clears throat> Turn this all off. And we're going to, of course, you know me, sprinkle it with some dried chives. Can't wait till this summer when I can have my own fresh herbs and chives and all that out of the garden. I make it look pretty. And let's see, how about we just use this? We're going to get this out. Ooh, that is hot. We're going to let it cool. I'm going to cut my little area here. I'm going to let it cool before I taste it and do that. I looked up for y'all. The different five winners, red bud winner is first, and that's when the red buds, like I said, the eastern red buds are blooming. And then dogwood winner, and of course you guys can guess that is when the dogwoods are blooming. It's used, now some of these, I always thought these were later, like in April, May, but maybe it's because we have had such a warm February, it's starting a little earlier. But after that's the locust winter, and then originally like in the middle of May, what my mom used to say, was blackberry winter when the blackberry bushes are starting to bloom. And then the last one, well, the last one most people talk about is britches winter. They say it's cold out there, you gotta get your britches on. But if you look back into a lot of folklore, there's one last one that makes it six, which is whippoorwill winter. And that's when you hear the whippoorwills out there and they're moving around. So those are just, I mean, it's all folklore where these came from, but you know what? It's pretty close to always being right. Talk about it on the news. I got it in the papers. I see it all the time. So let me see if I can get this piece out here without too much problem. Hmm. There we go. That looks good. Some more of this. I got a little bit of everything. Now I need a fork. And this is where I burn my face. It smells delicious. Got the potatoes down here, got some of the beans, the cheese. Mm. Yeah, I think I could just stand here and eat this whole plate instead of finishing this video. That was good. Lots of flavor. I can feel a little bit of the spiciness on my tongue from the red pepper flakes, but like I said, I put them in at the end of the cooking that way they didn't the oil didn't make them bloom basically and all the heat come out of them so this is our cowboy casserole I'm gonna post it I'm also going to put the recipe for it down below in the comments or in the description it's also gonna be on my website gregs-kitchen.com for any of you people that are new since you're coming to us from, through the collaboration or anyone just new joining the channel um, you can go over on my website, gregstashkitchen.com. I always put all these in it. 
the videos we do with the link to the video and the <clears throat> recipe so you can just print it out right there and there's probably about two or three hundred other recipes on there that I haven't done videos on I've been doing that website for 15 years maybe a little bit longer so there's a lot of great recipes on there you might want to check out but again we have 16 other channels mm, two four six of them I think have already done their videos and then me and my mom mama Vera are doing them so you have one every day so what you need to do is at the end of the month I'm going to be giving away a hundred dollar gift certificate on Amazon and a couple other surprise gifts maybe that I will tell you about <clears throat> in future videos <clears throat> that potatoes getting me so what you need to do is go to everybody's video like subscribe and share and most of all make sure you put a comment down below because on the 31st I'm going to draw a date 1 through 31 probably 1 through 30 and those are the dates of the month we'll draw one of those and then on that day I'll use the random comment checker on the internet it'll pull one comment and that person's going to win like we do did last year and the year before so don't forget to go to each one of the channels these are some great channels great recipes they're putting together some really good stuff for our marching in with casseroles like actually they do every year I really love doing this collaboration and I hope you guys are enjoying it too so don't forget to go down below and check out everyone else's channels I have them by date and a link directly to their channel and then just go over to gregs-kitchen.com on the first page you'll see our marching with castles 2023 if you click on that that's going to have everybody listed as well so until next time I hope you all have a great day stay warm in this what is this red bud winter that I'm being told and we'll see you soon take care bye bye